Rich Shea here, unboxing Mobile Markets, a smartphone ink game designed by Ivan Lashin and Victor Miller Gausa, probably Gausa, published by Cosmodrome Games, Arcane Wonders in the US, I guess with work by Comrades Development. So I think I did an unboxing on uh, smartphone ink and I really like the game. It's really dry, it's a little long, it's a pure economic game. I, I like that kind of game. Not everybody thinks it's fun. This game is a little shorter and, I don't know, maybe a little more lighthearted, but still a serious economic game. And it's got the Dice Tower Essentials logo on it. So let's open it up. And then here's the game rules. And we'll go over those kind of quickly and then look at the components. All right, so it's all about selling mobile phones into the market. You have planning pads, if you know about Smartphone Inc., you plan by overlapping them. They have two sides each. You can use any combination of the two of the four sides. And the symbols that are showing determine your technology research, your production, set prices, marketing, which is a bigger part of this game. That makes the price more expensive. And you have to cover up at least one spot. And each spot that's covered is also a production. On your corporate board, you're going to have... Um, the cost of producing a phone which is basically one and then you'll add features and as you add features they might cost money but if you add a third feature it definitely costs more money then you'll calculate how many of them you produce you'll calculate the profit as you go through things there's also um, so you start with one feature available to you um, a technology card there's a special bonus thing for you um, a reference card and there are player markers, five per player. You need um, two of them on there and two of them on the um, the scoring track. And you'll also need one, as you put out the, the shared pieces on the board, you'll track your relative prices and that determines turn order for each of the phases. So there's also a phase marker. The game's very um, straightforward in the way the rules work. Some progress tokens, in case you don't spend all your progress, you can save some from turn to turn. Uh, a discount tokens, cards that aren't claimed and may be discounted for the next round. After that, they'll disappear. 108 customers in three types. There's like value, regular, and like special critical customers in those three different colors that create the market for your phones. There's a set of event decks that occur during the game. Um, technology cards that give you specific production advantages, marketing campaign cards that give you specific sales advantages, features that you can acquire to add to your phone, and there's a solo deck, Steve Jr. Steve is the solo opponent in the uh, smartphone ink game. So in the game, uh, you're going to lay out the shared pieces, which is sort of, actually it's the um, round order track and the scoring board, and there's also the uh, market for features you can get, um, technology cards, private customers, and marketing cards. Okay, um, There's a starting setup card, and the event cards will add um, new um, customers every round. So you get a cut up setup card. It tells you how many of each kind of customer you're going to put out down here. Okay, and then on your own turn, you'll have the um, the uh, planning pads. There's two. Um, your starting cards, your your goods and profit thing, the place where you put the technologies. Okay, and then in gameplay, you just follow the uh, rounds: phase one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then you go to the next round, and you keep doing that for five years. That's five times that happens. Okay, so the first thing you do is everybody's price marker goes to five. This is where the price markers are set in this bottom thing. You'll retain the same order you had before, but everybody just moves up to five no matter what they set the price at for the last round. Okay, um, the first round, your, your starting technology card will tell you your relative turn order. Reveal an event. You'll reveal an event card, and you put it on the setup deck, overlapping the bottom half of the last round so that when you take a new event card you put it over the previous ones covering the event but not the customers 
and not covering the additional production icons. One thing that happens is that every turn everybody's production increases by one as the market just gets bigger, okay? Then refill the displays, okay? So, and event cards will modify the rules and they're all the things you'd expect. They change one thing or another. You refill displays. One of the things that happens is cards that aren't taken, that cost, get a discount of one, unless they only cost one, in which case they're just removed. And if they were already had a discount, they're removed. But the remaining cards get a discount of one token put on them, and then new cards are added to fill up um, the number of cards. Okay, that's what the discount tokens are for. It's always um, four cards, uh, three for the feature display, four for the technology and marketing cards, then you add customers. So you add new customers to the market. Customers that are left over stay there, okay? And you always add in the sum of the numbers indicated on the setup cards plus the total for the event cards. So each turn there's going to be more customers added than the last turn, plus there might be leftover customers, okay? It's not, as we made the mistake, filling up to that number. It's always adding that number. So if it's two, three, three, even if there's some leftover customers, you're going to add two, three, and three. You go to the planning phase. That's where you overlap your cards using either side. And you can have plus or minus the base cost, um, how many technology points you have to spend in a turn, how many marketing points you have to spend in a turn. And this is how many goods you produce plus whatever's on the event plus whatever you covered up. There might be other things, cards that give you more production okay and then you go to the pricing phase where you take the pricing tokens and you move from five to whatever your new price is which you could go less than five or more than five then you spend your technology points okay um, you can buy one technology card and as many feature cards as you can afford and the discount tokens might apply and you might have some left over and then the same thing with the marketing cards, okay? You can buy, I think it's one marketing campaign card, and then the rest can be spent on private customers. And you don't know who they are when you take them. They're taken face down, but um, they'll cost the same, uh, one marketing point from any of the three stacks. Those are customers that only you can sell to, but you must sell to them first. You can't like save them from turn to turn even if you can take other public customers. You have to take all the private customers you've taken that you can sell to first. Then you produce the goods based on the icons on the event cards, on your cell, and the number of covered spaces. So you'll set how many goods you make. Okay, and so there's what's here. That would be like one, two, and there are two covered over, three, four, five, six, and one from this, seven. So in this example, there's seven. Then you do sales. In sales, you create the product, which is you add features to your phone, which might adjust the cost. It's going to cost one, so the, the profit's going to be down one from the cost. And if you add all three features, it's going to be down another one, plus many of the features have a cost. The features might also add star icons to your phone. Some customers want star icons rather than specific features, multi-camera, uh, 5G, uh, near-field communications, 8K recording capability, or flexible display. Okay, Then you take the cost, all the dollars here, and you subtract that from the price, and that's going to be your net profit per sale, and you set that on the scale so you remember. Then you do sales. Okay, and you do it in order of cheapest phones to most expensive phones, but you have to meet the customer requirement, which is always, almost always, a price. The green people will either want a cheap phone or the features, and then you sell the phone to them either way. The regular customers just care about the price. You have to sell it to them at the price they want or less than that. The complex customers are ready to buy at the set price and below but they also have specific needs. So you have to have a price match, although their price, they're willing to ha pay high prices. They want specific features, which might be and ors of features and quality stars. 
Okay, so then you go over that. So they have a, a price and either plus or either for requirement or for the blue people, no requirement at all. And you have to sell to your private customers that you can sell to first. Then you start taking customers from the market starting on the left and working your way up. So you can't take the expensive people first just because you're selling them a cheap phone. You have to sell to the people who want your cheap phone first and then keep going up. Then you calculate um, your profit. So first is the profit. Uh, the first thing you do is whoever sold the most number of phones gets a profit. Uh, bonus, $8 for first place, 4 for second, 2 for third. Okay, if you sell the same number of goods, the victory points are summed up and then divided in sort of easy to figure out way. There might be technology and marketing campaign cards that trigger at the end of the round, you resolve those. Um, some people let you get a bonus if you haven't sold, sold all your phones, there are things like that. Then ca calculate the profit, the number of phones you sold times the profit you get per phone. Then at the end of the phase, all the customers from all the player sales piles go to the discards, okay? Take the feature cards off your phone, you'll be able to rearrange them next time. Reset the markers for the number of produced goods and net profit tracks to the zero space on the corporate board. The game ends after five rounds, whoever has the most money wins. There's a solo variant, I'm not going to go through that. That ends. There's an appendix that explains the event cards, the marketing campaign cards, they're all pretty straightforward. The technology cards, um, the feature cards don't need that, and there's some credits. Okay, so, and here's the components inside, not, not very shocking or surprising. Here's a, a set of, punch out the, the, the player planning boards. Each player gets a white one and a black one, just indicated by the little corners. And you see, you can overlap them, you have to overlap at least one space. You can overlap as many as you want. If you wanted a configuration like that, I don't know why you would. I guess you'd make six phones and they would sell for $7. And you get two marketing and two technology. Okay, And then you can use either side. Um, they don't have to be the matching size. You can use like this, like this, like this, or like that. Okay, And it's the same for each player. These are all the same. Here's each player's um, base. Uh, these are pretty thick cardboard, so that's fine for that. The base cost, uh, only if this spot's occupied, you add one more, and up to three features. Some of the cards will let you add actually even more features, and then this punches out so you can move your little block and they don't move out of the way very well. Um, and that works. That works fine in this game. You get to try it out, and there are... Um, one for each player, and they have the player colors at the bottom. Redberry, Atlantis, SunTech, and Shooting Star. I think those are the same companies from the cell phone, smartphone ink game. Okay, um, there's the technology leftover chips, the discount chips, the uh, scoring board, so you need a marker for 1 to 50, and then 50, 100, 150. And it's all just about money. And the... Uh, the boards here, preparation and planning, uh, pricing, technology, marketing, production, sales, profit. You just lay these out and the bottom track is where people put the price they have for the phones, which in most phases, the person with the cheapest goes first. However, in the marketing phase, I think in marketing, it's a reverse turn order, so the person with the most expensive phone gets to spend their marketing points first. Um, here's the uh, the player cubes and the... You just move that one along to show the current segment, so it's very difficult to lose track. And I guess the player colors, black, yellow, red, blue. Uh, some bags. The cards... Oh, they're not... They're not well, they're... They're sort of in a wrapper. That's that's easy for me. So here's blue. Price only customers are regular customers. Here's um, technology. I mean, things you can add to your phone. Um, see, there's a star. There's a cost. When you add this one, it increases the price of your phone by uh, your de the cost of your phone by one. So your profits go down. As opposed to this one, which you have to spend three tech on, but it's the same thing, 
but without that. Um, this one costs two, it's the same technology, but it's got two stars instead of one, but it still costs a dollar. So I think there are things like that for most of the technologies. They come out randomly, so you get the one you can get when you can get it. These are um, value customers. They would like a cheap phone or a quality phone, uh, but their quality requirements are pretty high. This person wants uh, four stars. This person, this person wants both of these features or a really cheap phone, and a lot of them are like that. A combination of a technology and three stars. So you can sell them a cheap phone or you can sell them a very high tech phone. Either way, you're not gonna make much money on these people, right? Probably. And these are the, um, the willing to pay a lot, but they also want their technology, but it's not too bad. That's two stars. That's either or and a price less than seven. Um, it's many have like a single feature or an either or, or two or three stars, or a single feature, but they're willing to pay up to eight. So if you can get them, and if they're still there when you sell, because if you have the high cost phone, you're gonna sell into the market last, and you might find some of your high tech customers have left. Okay, and there's um, the starting uh, two player, one player, three player, or four player. So the more people in the market each turn, depending on the number of players, that makes sense. Here's a marketing card, costs two marketing points during profit. You get a dollar for each star on your product. So they give you little bumps. Um, uh, take a private person from the deck. Um, the regular customers consider your price to be too lower. That gives you like a lot of flexibility for setting your price high. So then these are, um, oh, events. I know those, I think these are, I think those are solo, yeah, solo card thing, solo play cards. Um, these are to help the players, remind the players of what the customers are like, what the icons mean. And the last set of cards are yeah, the technology cards, doing sales, get an extra star on your product, um, exchange your progress tokens for production. They just do all kinds of wacky things. Plus one production. If you have 8K on your product, how that works, I don't know. You get all stars from your inactive cards. So these are a bunch of wonderful things you want to get. And then um, the, um, the event card. So I'm not sure what that does. Finance and economics. So that has a news thing, you know, it has a theme, the end of the ice tech age. What will be the end of the long patent war bring to the buyers? You get three more of the tech cards this round and players can buy two of them. Uh, so the events do things. Oh, so that's customer. It just adds one V customer and one to everybody's production. Um, some things do add more than one customer, um, but they all add one to your production. Okay. And change up the game just a little bit. So I, I like it. It's not, I don't think quite as heavy and dry as smartphone, as smartphone ink. But it's a fun game, and you still have to do some serious planning and thinking and try to outmaneuver your opponent. So I've enjoyed my one play that I've got in so far of it. Actually, one and a half plays. I got to try a, a last year a, a couple of rounds in a, in a demo, but I got a full play in at Origins this year. And, of course, I'd already bought the game because I wanted to make sure I got a copy. They didn't have a lot of copies, but they had a significant number at the... Um, at the booth. So I like it a lot. I think it's going to be a popular game. It's a little more colorful and less dry looking than Smartphone Inc. Uh, but it's a similar game in many respects, but streamlined somewhat. And I think it's shorter. It doesn't have the geographical effect, but trying to scarf up all the customer cards before the other players get them or around them getting them makes for a significant challenge. 
So I've enjoyed the play and I'm looking forward to playing it again. And I hope this helps you decide whether it's a game you'd like to play or not. So you can watch for more openings. Um, I have a few to publish right now. And thanks for watching. Bye for now.